Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Uh, glad to be coming to you today about Jesus Christ, amen, the Savior of us, of the whole world, amen. He came to earth himself to be a Savior for the whole world today. We're going to tell you about a uh, special service we're going to have on Friday, May the 7th, um, at Living Waters Ministries, amen. The address is 564 Highway 100, Somerville, Georgia. If you'll type that in, that GPS, amen, I believe it'll take you right over there to it, amen. It starts at 6 p.m. Alabama time or 7 p.m. Georgia time. Just come on out if you can, if you're over there, amen, and you want to have a good time in the Lord, it's on a Friday night, amen. What better place to spend a Friday night, amen, than having a good time in the Lord, amen. We're going to have a message today right here on the broadcast from Brother Harold Hughes. Amen. The name of his message is They Shall Recover. Amen. He's going to tell us about uh, uh, all the things that go along with They Shall Recover. Amen. It'll be coming from Mark 16, um, um, 17, and 18. Rita Clarty will bring us a song afterwards. The name of it is Thanks to Calvary. Amen. If you would, please subscribe, like, and click the bell to turn on your notifications on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And also check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Amen. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Welcome back to What the World Needs is Jesus. I have another little short message that's going to lift your faith. You know, the Word of God is faith building. He said, faith come up by hearing and hearing by the Word. I'm going to give you a little word. Hope it builds your faith tonight. I want to ask you a simple question to get started here. What would you do if you knew Jesus would back you up in what you said or did? Who would you lay hands on? Who what would you pray for? If you knew, God would back you up. Well, I want to bring you a little scripture. Mark 9, 23 says, Nothing's impossible to him that believes. Nothing is impossible to you if you believe. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You know, it's not what you do, it's who is in you. Right. It's who's living inside of you. Right. That's is where the power's at. Mm -hmm. But Genesis 1 said, that God said, let us make man in our image. In our image, he made man. You're made in the image of God. You're made in his image. Let me break that down a little bit here. I won't go quickly. John 4 23 says God, talking about God the Father, is a spirit and he's worthy to be praised. God gave you a spirit. I tell people I'm a, I am ai got to live in this body, my spirit, myself. I live in a fleshly body. I am a spirit. God gave me a spirit like unto his. Right, Jesus came in the flesh. I'm in the flesh. I can receive the Holy Ghost just like Jesus. Yeah. I'm made in the image of God. So therefore, with God dwelling inside me, according to 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, God living inside of me. That's how I get the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And I, in Mark 9 says, nothing's impossible to them that believes. So these scriptures, if you just took those two, it ought to build your faith to where you go out here and you lay hands on the sick. You, you, you would pray for them and you would believe they would be healed mm -hmm. because they would yeah. if you believed it. And, you know, we are Jesus' replacement. Let me explain how I can explain this. Being Jesus' replacement. When Jesus was on the cross, he said it's finished. What he meant was his work here on earth in the flesh was finished. But then Jesus said in John 13, 5, that he left us an example that we should follow 
his example. We should do as he did. So what did Jesus do when he was here? He walked about preaching the kingdom of heaven. He walked about telling us that hell was for Satan to not go there, to live right, to repent. The Lord tried to tell us how to live right and what to do. And he went about healing all the sick, casting out demons. Jesus did all of this work. And then he tells us in John 14 that this work that he did, we shall do greater works. Uh -huh. I want to break that word greater down. There is a lot of misunderstanding in what that word greater means. I want to tell you something. You're not greater than God. No. You can't do greater things than God can do. You're not greater than God Almighty. What this scripture was trying to tell us, that we will reach greater number of people than he did. Jesus didn't have CBN, TBN, and Telefriend. He didn't have cell phones, internet. He didn't have all of the ways that we have to reach out to so many people. So when he said greater works, he meant we would bring more into the kingdom of God than he did walking around. Jesus preached to 3,000 on one account. He preached to 5,000 on one account. That's the largest that you can find in the Bible Jesus spoke to at one time was when he fed the multitude. Mm -hmm. But when he said we will do greater works, I want to explain to you how we have done greater works in this world. The Rock Church in Texas had 700,000 people in the one attendance. 700,000. Wow. Jesus had 5,000. The Pope in the Philippines in 1995, check this out, on a youth day, had over 5 million people in that event. Wow. That's greater works. Carmen loved his music that just passed away. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, he held 80,000 people in a gospel concert. And thousands got saved. There were more people saved in Carmen's concert than Jesus preached to at his largest crowd. That is what he meant, greater works than these will you do. We can't comprehend what it would be like to, I can't imagine preaching to 80,000 people. To, I play ball in front of 6,000 and 7,000, but as a preacher, I probably 1,300 is my max. But I would love to, because I know that God said that we would do greater works than he did, and I'm looking forward to it. But if God would back you up in everything that you Attempt to pray for. Would you go running out and praying for everybody? Would you go lay hands on the sick? Would you go find the ones that got COVID and pray for them? Would you go find the ones with AIDS and pray for them? Would you find the people with cancer and start laying hands on them? Would you start witnessing the people that is lost? Would you find people that was full of demons and start casting them out in his name? He tells us in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, that these signs shall follow the believer. It didn't say preachers, didn't say teachers, didn't say apostles. It said believers. Yeah. That's, that's everybody that believes that Jesus died and rose again. That these signs shall follow them but believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In his name, not ours. Right. And they shall speak with a new tongue. That means to speak in the in an unknown language, that's to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I want to share something with you about praying in the Holy Ghost. In Proverbs, it says, the abundance of one's heart, he'll speak. So if, if the Holy Ghost is dwelling in you, you're going to speak in a heavenly language because the abundance of your heart, you'll speak, according to the Bible. That is where the language comes from, out of the heart. It's because it's the Holy Spirit Speaking through you. Yeah. And they shall take up serpents. You know, Paul got snake bit and just shook it off into the fire yeah, and it yeah. didn't hurt him. Right. 
But, and if, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. I went to a meeting once and I heard a preacher that was preaching there and he had just got back from uh, Kenya, Africa. Mm -hmm. And these witches and warlocks there and witch doctors, they had all got together and they were going to kill the man. And they gave him some stuff to drink when he was thirsty and he drank it. And then he went back behind the pulpit and kept on preaching. And people started getting saved. And here all these witches and warlocks come down there and said, your God's more powerful than our God, and we want to serve your God. And he didn't understand. They said that we had given him enough poison to kill ten elephants, and he drank it like water, and it didn't harm him. Because God was protecting him. Because of the Holy Spirit in him. Because he's made in the image of God. Hallelujah. And they, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want to cover that just a little bit. And they shall lay hands on the sick. Who shall? The believer shall. If you are a believer, God saying, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say they might. He didn't right. say that they would do it instantly. I want to tell you a story of, like this. I'm going to break it down on your level for a second. If you go to, you get a runny nose, you get sick, you're upset, you run a fever, you're sick. You know you're sick. You go to a doctor, and you wait, you wait, you wait, and you finally get back there, and he get little sticks and says, stick your tongue out. Ah, uh, you're sick. Eight years of college. You're sick. <laughs> I knew I was sick when I got here. So he gets a shot, gives you a shot, charges you 150 bucks. And then he tells you, go to the pharmacy and get these pills and take all of them. We're going to knock this out in about five to seven days. Well, the common cold only lasts five days anyway. But you'll go to that doctor and you'll wait those five days waiting to get better and take that medicine. But yet you can go to a church and like James chapter 5 says, and let them elders pray for you and they shall be healed and you, you go up there and the preachers pray for you. Ten seconds passed. You ain't healed yet. Oh, y'all bunch of fake preachers. Y'all fake prophets. You don't give the preacher you just throw him under the bus right there because you didn't get healed in the first ten seconds. The Bible says in the same hour they were healed. Sixteen times the Bible said he healed them all in the same hour. You know why, I, I, I can't understand why people, the Bible says the, in the hour, why didn't he heal them instantly? Sometimes he did, but most of the time it took a few minutes. It took up to an hour for the healing to take place. And I wondered, and I figured it out, that God would wait that little bit of time to see if you had enough faith to keep believing. To keep believing, if you didn't get healed right then that second, if you had enough faith to believe that Jesus was going to heal you. So if I go back and I tell you again, that lay hands on the sick and they shall. They shall. That means they will recover. Right. It didn't mean in the first five seconds. It means that they will recover. Amen. So all you have to do is lay hands on and believe it and wait for God to do the work. God will do the work. God can't lie. When God said they will recover, they will recover. You can count on it. It's in his word. Hallelujah. I thank Jesus for that. I can't wait. And when I read Mark 16, 17, 18, that these signs will follow them that believe, I take that to heart. You know, I'm just an old country boy. I believe what the Bible says. Yeah. And when the Bible tells me I can do these things, I, I'm just country enough to go out and try it. And I believe every word that God has told us in his will. And I know that I am made in the image of God and the abundance of one's heart he speaketh. And I'd also know that nothing's impossible to them that believe because they're made in the image of God. It ain't you doing the work. It's who lives inside of you. It's the God that dwells inside you, that's inside of you, that is doing the work. He tells us to go and do his work. 
for his work was finished. You know, he went to build you a mansion. Yes. And while he was gone, he asked you to do his work and to follow his example. So people, you keep praying one for another. And when you lay hands on someone, you know, if, if you lay hands on someone and they died a few minutes later, don't get discouraged because God is in control. God is in total control. God might, there's a scripture that says that God took people to keep them from the evil that was to come upon them, to protect them. Sometimes God takes people. Sometimes God lets people go through things. But I want to tell you, he said, lay hands on them and they shall recover. Lay hands on the sick and believe and go to church somewhere on Sunday. And if you need help, you turn to your Bible or call Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. He will pray for you. There's, there's several men around here and women that will pray for you. There's a few trying and a thousand dying. We need to get to work. All of these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. God bless you. Today I went back to the place where I used to go. Today I saw the same old crowd I knew before. When they asked me what had happened, I tried to tell them Thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore Thanks to Calvary I am not the one I used to be Thanks to Calvary things are different than before as the tears rolled down my face I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore then I went back to the place where I used to live my little boy ran and hid behind the door I said son never fear you have a new daddy cause thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore thanks to Calvary I am not the one I used to be Thanks to Calvary Things are different Than before As the tears Rolled down my face I tried to tell them Thanks to Calvary I don't come here Anymore